we, we are back. You're still watching a Metropole Television. My name is Simba Elijah Charles. Can you welcome to your official Monday sector trends? All right, now let's kick in. At certain times, little no behaviors. Now, the pandemic has also had an impact on how people live, how they communicate and do business and form, and most especially how we entertain. Now, one of the worst hit industries is the event industry, which has seen accelerated changes in a consumer behavior. But how can the industry do better? How can it transform? form and adapt to the new changing times and most importantly what opportunities lie ahead now to decipher this and other issues we're joined by Nyawera Mubagubi who is the PR and events manager at Transit Media joining us at uh, through online means and uh, Emmanuel Nabora who is the CEO Pratia. Emmanuel how are you doing sir? Doing well how are you? Fantastic. Yeah, brother, good morning. Can you hear me loud and clear? Good morning. I can hear you loud and clear. Fantastic. We're going to start with, as they say, ladies first. We, we got into the pandemic and we're saying that your industry was the worst hit. Yeah, brother, can you talk to me? Was this unprecedented or you were ready for it? Um, to be honest, we were not ready for it. Yes. We thought maybe the disease will come and affect us two, three months. But we didn't think a whole year. So to be honest, we were not ready. We were shocked. We were beyond. We are still recovering right now as we speak. I would like to come back to you on that. We are still recovering because that's where the talking point is. But let me just cross over to Imano. Were you ready or you walked right into the fire? <laughs> um, I've always loved going out, having fun. Yes. And uh, just to give you my background, uh, is I used to work for the Chamber of Commerce yes. as the CEO. And so I used to organize business delegations uh, to oversee countries. Yes. And so I would go to Hong Kong, China, and all that. And then all of a sudden, the president is on TV and there is a lockdown. You can't travel no more. So I'm at home just sitting there with my wife and I'm like, I am bored, I want to do something. So I went online actually looking for any platform that we can use, that I can see what is happening around, just to see if people are still alive. Because, you know, with the lockdown, we thought everybody's dead. Yes. So I couldn't find any. And that is when the idea of coming up with a social platform that could allow users to manage and plan the events came about. And that's when we started up and we came up with Patea. Pretty much. I'm gonna come. I'm, I'm going to come and talk about Patayab. Now, where I, let me cross over to you now. You're saying that we are still recovering. Is that the statement you want to go with, or you want to say it's now that we're trying to change ourselves to fit in? What What has happened is we had to change our tactics. Yes. We've had to change our game, how we think, how we see things how we execute things yes for example um this year one of my clients launched a phone earlier in the year ideally if this was 2019 we'd have had an event of 250 people upwards our event it had 50 people so we've learned our lessons and we've learned how to be more inclusive of technology yes so yes. virtual um, tools and also physical tools and then merge both together. So yes. we are still in the process of learning our lessons. We are picking up. We are in the process of not exactly recovery, but in the process of turning things around and taking completely new routes. And just before I cross to Emmanuel, because that's, that's, that's why it is again, Yamera, because I mean, you woke up to 2020. I mean, January was good, yeah. Feb was yes. good, March was yes. okay, up to some yeah. point. And then you're like, wow, it's not working anymore. We got to change it. Yeah. Can you talk to yeah. me? Is that where the heat came from? And what has been the transition so far? Are your audiences, are your clients adopting this new look that you're trying to push to them? Yes. So what happened, first few months, everyone was dealing with the pandemic yes. so we didn't think does it even make sense to have an event at this time people are dying so first few months we are like okay dealing with the pandemic as corporates as businesses then after the first quarter the second quarter of the year 
business had to go on. Products still have to be launched. Clients want their businesses to continue. So we had to change tactic. Clients come to us and they're like, we are launching this product in, for example, in September, and we need your help. How do we go about it? And for, I remember last year, we had to have one of the first ever, for one of our clients in the telecommunications industry, we had to have a completely virtual launch. Yes. Some Thing we had never yes. done before so it meant changing tact how do we invite people how do we make sure they even log in do they have the com the technology will their laptops work will their phones work okay fine so they have the technology and they're adaptable how do we facilitate them so it means uh giving them airtime or bundles to log in okay the other thing is how do we make them comfortable so we started sending care packages to our guests, right? Also, we learned. So for me to send someone a care package, I need to first of all, where do they live? So that's a whole logistical difference. 300, 500 people calling everyone, hi, we want to invite you to our event, we want to send you a package, where do you live? That's when you discover some places, the addresses, you have to now start discover, uh, describing, we live near a petrol station, so and so, when you get here, call me. So our tact had to change, and, but we've learned our lessons and clients are really embracing the whole digital aspect of it. Pretty much, all right, let me cross over to Emmanuel. I mean, your perfect example of we have to change now yeah. And we gotta use this pandemic or this unprecedented environment to come up with something that's gonna fit within this environment. Yes. So talk to me about Party Up. When did you create it and what are you trying to achieve? And have you experienced some sort of growth? And is that the future for you, Emmanuel? Yes. Um I think what we've done so far for Party Up, we, we have uh, two customer segments. Yes. We allow party planners and event organizers to create and manage their events online. And you also have a, a feature where if people looking to attend to events, event attendees, they can just log in and search for events within their locality and they get it in real time. Yes. So we initially we just wanted to do the event listing alone. Like if you're a restaurant, if you're a club and you're hosting something, maybe a karaoke night or maybe uh, Roomba night or culture night, we we'll just list your event there. Yes. So we, we wanted to enable consumers to be able to find events in real time within their locality. Yes. So that if you're living in uh, Lovington, you don't have to go all the way to Ngong Road to get an event. You can just go uh, online and see an event that is happening near you and you attend to that. But then you realized there's COVID now. So with COVID, there are no physical events. So that means even if uh, our consumers or our event organizers were to list the events, they would get uh, no attendees. So we introduced the live stream feature that you can uh, have your own event and just live stream it to your users. Yes. And so your clients will be able to go online and see the events that are being listed that are live and they'll be able to view that. So okay. I think it's the future for events because yes. uh, going forward, I feel, uh, I'm sure uh, COVID-19 is gonna go down but we need to embrace hybrid kind of events whereby we are, we are also physical and we are also virtual. Yes. Yeah. Which is exactly, you mentioned something good because that's exactly what I wanted to also engage in Yabwera this morning. Is it, Yabwera, because what we know at one point, we're going to talk while well, the COVID-19 pandemic is gone. We've, that's, that's everybody's optimism. Where's the balance? Are we going to go back to what we used to be when it comes to these events? What, what are we losing? What are we introducing with this digital events? What, are, we, are we going to go back? Is this a mainstay now? Um, looking at it from a corporate event perspective, yes. we cannot replace the concept of touch and feel and human interaction. And right now, the virtual aspect does not give us that. Because, well, for I'm, example... Well, well, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to cut you short. I'm, I don't mean to, but... Is it, is it possible that, well, when you're, when you're sort of taking out this touch and feel, you're introducing another experiment that might replace touch and feel? Yes, there is a possibility of that. Yes. But if I look at it from someone who's launching a product, yes. I want people to come and touch it. I want people to come and experience how it feels in my hand, 
how it feels maybe to actually use it there. But then on the other hand, for people or companies that are launching services, the virtual aspect totally works. So it's a, it's a balance depending on what you're exactly working with, what your objective is, and what the end goal is for you as the events people. Yes. So it can work, and for some, we might just have to go back to the old ways and integrate the new technology that we've picked up in the last one year. Pretty much. All right, Emmanuel, that's yeah. the same, same question that I have for you. Pate up. Is it for now? Or that is where events organization is headed? Of course, you cannot uh, deny the fact that, okay, people still want to have, there is a different feeling when you're attending an event in person and just being there. Yes. And there is also a different feeling when you're attending an event online. Yes. But what you wanted to do is uh, to give the consumer a choice that uh, you can no. attend a live event, uh, a physical event, yes. but you can as well get an opportunity to enjoy a party from your house, from your house at the comfort of your bed or of your, of your couch. So going forward, yes, we are going to have that, but until the social distancing regulations have been relaxed, we have to embrace virtual events and virtual models because we want to reduce this pandemic. Of course, the business have been hit badly there have been so much losses in the event industry. And so we, don't, we want to participate in reducing the interaction that bring about the spread by making sure people still continue doing business, but it's now virtual. But if we go full blast into physical events, then the pandemic is going to continue. And if it continues, we're going to lose so much money. Yes. So going, I think in the future, people have now gotten used to doing things online. Like you can order your food online, you can order drinks online, and that's where we come in. We want to ensure that life moves on despite the pandemics, despite anything. Like you can do your things uh, both physically and also virtually. Yeah, well, I'm still on that point as well. So mm -hmm. what is easy to organize? Some people have been saying, well, online events are quite easy to put together. Even cost effective, they're quite easy as well to put together. So that is the reason we think we should be moving in that direction. So when you find yourself within this conversation, are you losing out or are you gaining as event planning companies? We are definitely losing out. The yes. revenue is not what it is, right? But also looking at it from the perspective of our clients' health, we want you guys to be alive. So we don't want you to come to our event where you're 3,000 of you, then you end up catching COVID, transmitting it to your families so if we if we are looking at it currently the revenues are not what they were we used to make money from food from venues from setup from sound so many other aspects of it right yes. but now yeah. if you're setting up a virtual for example staff event the staff are attending from home and maybe you'll just have the management of the company present so if you're feeding people, you're feeding maybe 10 people. If you're organizing sound, it's sound for the virtual transmission. So it's not the actual sound that we used to have. If it's venue hire, we are no longer going to the big hotels. We are having our events in our staff canteens, in our boardrooms. So in terms of revenue, it's not what it was. But we've learned our lessons and we are trying to adapt where we can. So you came up with all right? Yes. And we like to think that this is the time that it would pick up really good. Can you give us uh, that information on the ground that you actually picked up really good because that's exactly what people were looking for? Yes, Sparta picked up really good because uh, during the pandemic, remember, with the lockdowns, most people were, there were restrictions even going to shopping places and malls and stuff like that. Yes. So after we launched the, we lo we launched the, com the, the platform around May last year, and so people started using our platform for streaming in their events. But then we realized that for you to have a good time, then there has to be the aspect of food and drinks. So we introduced the marketplace where liquor retailers and uh, food vendors can onboard themselves and be able to access our markets through our platform. Yes. So uh, our users are also able to order food and to order drinks just via the same, the, the same application. So, uh, it has picked up right. So, so right now we have at least a thousand clicks in a day, 
And we launched our app the other day, I think about a week ago, and already have 100 downloads organically. Yes. And so we, we want to go into marketing full time to make sure that we reach out to the larger Nairobi, because right now we are serving a small uh, group of, of Nairobians, because we haven't even gone out into marketing yet. It's just organic growth. Yes. So we feel like we are, we have, we are in, the, in the right market right now, and people are embracing our services. And so we want, as we continue throughout the most part of this year, we want to go into full marketing and just make sure the consumer knows there's this product out there and that we are going to bring them the experience that they've been looking for. Like they're able to get a, a, a party uh, online immediately, they, they log into our, into our application, they can search, they can see, oh, this is happening within five radius, five miles from my house. And uh, it gives the, the consumer an opportunity to, to choose. Yes to know um, this one is streaming live, let me see what's happening there, I don't like it, let me choose this other one, this one is, this one is good. And it gives the event organizers uh, an opportunity to improve their services because you're collecting data that is going to inform them of what they're supposed to improve and what the consumer needs are. Because sometimes business people go into the business without knowing what the needs of the market are. Yes. But now with our platform, with the data that we have and the statistics that we get, we're able to advise our, our customers who are the part, uh, event organizers that this is what this demographic want. This age group wants this kind of event. And so this platform is really meant uh, to help businesses increase their revenues. Because now if you're in the event industry, it means either you are selling events or you are selling drinks or food. And so it caters for the needs of all event organizers and it caters for the needs of the event attendees because now you have a listing of events. You can choose, you can go for a karaoke night. If you want to go just for a cool jazz music, you know where it's, where it's, where it's found. And if you want just to sit at, uh, at home and just uh, enjoy and order a drink and still get to see what is happening out there, you can still do that. Pretty much. Yes. All right, Nabira, that's where we get into that part of the conversation now. For. Yes, you've been hit. But if somebody would have asked you, Nyabwera, like what opportunities have come up? You can see exactly what Emmanuel is talking about, especially from yes. cutting up. Like what opportunities have come up with us going online? Are they there or it is a substitution? I think the opportunities are there. Yes. For example, we never had the concept of sending care packages to our people who are going to attend our event virtually. So the opportunities are there for the people who are doing the deliveries. The opportunities are there for the people who are developing the care packages, the branding, and then there is the advertising concept where you put a note or something inside the care package that we are sending to people who are going to attend our event. Or you can send a branded cup. So if you Metropole is our sponsor, we send a Metropole branded cup and a note from Metropole inside the package. Yes. So there are, there are opportunities. There are opportunities in the people who are now developing the technology for live streaming, something that we really didn't need before. The whole concept of the digital changing, the whole concept of online MCs, for example. Before we have people who specialized in being an MC for a physical event, but being an MC for a virtual event is a completely different job. You must learn how to engage with people who are watching you from the comforts of your home. You must make sure to keep them engaged enough for them not to doze off mute, mute camera and doze off. So it's a completely different um, environment. The opportunities are there. We just need to see them and yeah. embrace them. All right, now, which leads me to Emmanuel therefore. We've seen the way in which the different sectors and industries have responded. I'm talking about the government response to this industry and sectors. You just can put it under two and hospitality sector because that's where you fall heavily therefore. And when we're talking about corporates are also getting hit out of the COVID-19 pandemic, you would expect some sort of level. We could be talking about how you as an industry would have been cautioned from the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. Do you feel that you matter as an important industry within this economy. And I'm talking to you about that in respect to the way in which you're treated by the government within this pandemic. It's funny because uh, the event industry uh, in Africa alone is, was valued at about 23.4 billion in 2017. Yes. That accounts to about 328,000 direct jobs. 
uh, and as you're talking right now, about 90% or 85% 85% of the of people who are benefiting directly from the event industry have lost their jobs. So what the government needed to do at this point in time was to push on us, especially us startups who are coming up with these solutions. Yes. But instead, I'm sure you are aware of this, the government has introduced a DST, uh, the Digital Services Tax, which is supposed to pay 1.5% of all our revenues that we're getting from our services. Yes. Uh, which I feel was, uh, was not, uh, it's so unfortunate, first of all, because we, they, there is a big opportunity out there, but us as startups, we need to be cushioned against, uh, against such taxes, especially at this moment, because people have lost money. And even if we are, we are going digital, uh, until we, are, we start going into the, uh, providing a marketplace and embracing e-commerce, most uh, companies have been hit. Big companies like Uber, they have had to cut down their services because, I mean, there were no, there were no people using Uber at that time. And so in the, the, digital, the digital industry as it is, we were supposed also to be cushioned against such taxes, first of all, and just making sure that the cost of, uh, the cost of, of operations goes down for ourselves because no business and it has been hit big time. Pretty much, Nyangbaira, that's exactly your point as well. I mean, when you hear that, when you cry that your revenues are full and heavily, and now on top of your revenues, because we like, to, because as a registered company, there are also other tax obligations that you have. Now they're saying, well, since you've migrated online, then you gotta pay the digital services tax because also looking at the revenue that you're making online. How do you react to that? Do you feel like well, you've been thrown into the frying pan? I feel, first of all, COVID yes. already really messed us up in terms of the revenues we were making, right? The employees we had to hire, we had to cut off a large majority of them. Yes. Then now coming with the digital service tax, for example, for me to push my event virtually, I'll now need 10 times the number of influencers I needed before, yeah. right? Yes. So that increases my cost of my online marketing, right? Before, maybe I planned this event a few months ago. We thought maybe this thing wouldn't be implemented. Costs have to go up. And then the costs from the influencers have to go up. Costs to clients have to go up. Do you know what that means? They end up cutting budget. So instead of hiring 10 influencers, I'm now cut and I hire eight so that I'm able to cushion for these digital services tax which is something that we did not expect. I mean, after all the, the losses we've made in 2020, we would expect the government to support us by allowing us to at least make some money based on the transition we've made from physical events to virtual events. Yes. But no sooner we started cashing in on the virtual events, the government is here with the digital <laughs> service tax and we just have to pay it what we do, but the suffering is there. Our people can feel it. And as businesses, we are really suffering. Please remember, all the other taxes are still applicable. Yeah. I still have to pay VAT. Remember, the digital service tax is on gross income, right? Yes. Yes. So I still have to pay VAT, pay digital service tax. If I'm using um, consultants, I have still have to pay the 5% withholding tax. So it's, it's, it's hitting us hard, and it's going to continue hitting us hard going forward. Pretty much. Emmanuel, let's wow. now for clear this conversation. Is there a prediction from within the industry when you foresee that things might get back to where they were pre-COVID? Uh, we have to, you, to get used to the new normal. Yes. We may not get back... Uh, to what we had pre-COVID, yes. Because I mean, things have changed out there, and um, with the UK uh, COVID variant, we don't know what's going to happen. Yes. So for now, for us to continue with our lives, we have to embrace technology and live with it. And because uh, where the world is headed to right now, we just have to use uh, we have to use technology as part of our daily business because yes. we can we cannot we cannot avoid it. And uh, I would adv advise any young businesses that are out there, let's think digitally. Because things may, it may, we may go back there, maybe things may go back maybe after maybe four or five years. We are not sure. We don't know. We can't tell. 
So it's uh, it's unprecedented. We can't tell. Yeah, well, the same question. Any prediction that you have for when things might go back to normal, or what needs to happen around here for us to say, well, well we we're getting back to normal. Um, normal. There's there's a new normal. Yes. We are not going back to where we were pre-COVID because people have learned new ways of doing things, right? Where, for example, if I was spending 10 million shillings on a physical event, I can spend 4 million on a virtual event. That's 6 million in terms of revenue I've saved. Why would I go back to pre-COVID? So we've learned new things. We've embraced technology. So going back is not an option. The way forward is now embracing technology, embracing new trends, and just moving forward because we don't know how this thing is going to go. Yes, there is vaccines coming, but how sure are we, you know, about it? So the concept is to embrace new technology, new trends, and just keep it moving. If it goes back in future, well and good. If it doesn't, we have to keep it moving. We have to keep it moving. That's exactly how we come to the end of our conversation this morning. Thank you very much, Nabwewa Mwaguri, PR and Events Manager, Transcend Media Group, and Emmanuel Nabwewa, CEO and Founder, Party Up. And you want to know exactly what they're doing, then you know what to do. Look for them online and also on Play Store as well, isn't it? Are they yeah, we are on Play Store as well. Nabwewa, how can we get your company as well? All right, we have a website, www.transcendmedia.co.ke. You can also reach us on social media, Transcend Media Group. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, name it. We are all over. So feel free to reach out for us for all your event solutions, PR advertising. We are here to support you. Fantastic. And especially during this COVID-19 pandemic, when especially you have to move digital. We take a short break yes. once we come back, our economic review. Yes.